Welcome back. You're watching Global Eye. Our big story right now, 23-year-old U.S. Army soldier Private Travis King was supposed to be on his way to Texas to face disciplinary action after serving two months in detention in South Korea. But he instead fled to North Korea. King was stationed in South Korea and was kept in detention facility in uh, Seoul after getting into fights and allegedly punching a Korean national there. After receiving a prison sentence, he was called back to the United States for disciplinary action where he said to have fled and joined a group tour of the dim demilitarized zone. It is claimed that he crossed over to North Korea from here. This development comes at a time when tensions are particularly running high with North Korea, which has not responded to U.S. requests for information on the well-being of their soldier. Pentagon spokesperson said that when Travis was being escorted to the United States, he was not accompanied all the way to gate as he wasn't in custody. Nobody anticipated that he wouldn't be getting on a plane to go home. Let's now discuss this with James Fretwell, analyst at uh, NK News. He's joining us to explain this big global story. Why did this happen and how the U.S. would be reacting to it in the days to come, considering that uh, there are no diplomatic relations between U.S. and North Korea. James, uh, why did this happen, according to you? And does the U.S. have any information about the condition of the soldier right now? Uh, to answer your question, why did this happen? Uh, we still don't know yet because we haven't heard anything from North Korea uh, on the status of Travis King and the U.S. hasn't been able to uh, contact North Korea to ask about King either. So we're still going to be waiting for details on this. There's a lot of speculation um, that maybe, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that uh, King was uh, perhaps face facing disciplinary action uh, on his return to the U.S. Uh, as a result of uh, his charges in South Korea. And um, if you look back to the Cold War, actually, there were um, a number of U.S. soldiers that also um, went to North Korea that were facing uh, disciplinary action in the U.S. military. They went to North Korea because they were frustrated with the American military or they sought to avoid this punishment. Uh, that's one possibility, but it's all speculation at the moment. We we just don't know for certain. Right. Uh, there are established hotlines between the two countries. Uh, what would the U.S. be trying to do at this stage? Is it important for the U.S. to get back the soldier? Would they seriously negotiate for him? Well, one problem that the U.S. has is that before the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, there were the U.S. doesn't have relations with North Korea, uh, but a number of European countries that are close to the U.S. do have diplomatic relations with North Korea. They would have had diplomats in the country. Um, but since the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of these diplomats were basically forced to leave North Korea. They couldn't conduct their activities as usual and they've been unable to return. So with the U.S. unable to talk with Pyongyang directly and there being few diplomats on the ground that the U.S. can call upon to intervene on its behalf, uh, Washington's going to find it very difficult to have much influence in this situation. It seems that uh, King, is his fate is in the hands of North Korea at the moment. Uh, James, do you get a sense that North Korea... And has this happened in the past that North Korea could use this soldier, Private Travis King, for propaganda purposes? And considering that he was in the U.S. military, as we know from 2021, would he have access to sensitive, sensitive information? Could the information that he has be of any use to North Korea? So in terms of propaganda usage, that is definitely a possibility. Of course, in the Cold War, when the um, there were there were five... Um, or six potentially American soldiers that went to North Korea, defected to North Korea, and the U.S. Uh, sorry, North Korea used these American soldiers in uh, movies, for example. They cast them as evil Americans in their propaganda films. Uh, they put them on loudspeaker broadcasts to talk ill of the U.S. and encourage more American soldiers to defect. That is one possibility. Um, but we also have to remember that uh, North Korea has been implementing a very strong COVID-19 
lockdown since 2020 that's, that's still ongoing. And uh, over the past few years, during this the the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there have actually been uh, a, a couple of defections from South Korea to North Korea. Now, in the past, North Korea might have really played this up for propaganda value, but actually it, it kind of glossed over them. And one possibility is because actually it doesn't want to encourage more crossings at the moment because of COVID-19. And so uh, in, in Travis King's case, uh, again, uh, potentially they, they might want to downplay this case because uh, they, they don't want more uh, people entering the country unauthorized. Uh, in terms of will they be able to get much sensitive information out of Travis King, uh, he was a relatively low rank in the US military uh, North Korea will definitely interrogate him for any possible information anyway, and uh, King might be able to provide them with a few useful details, but, but maybe nothing, uh, nothing too groundbreaking. This interrogation process actually, again, uh, to bring up the COVID-19 pandemic, the interrogation process might take a while because uh, North Korea might put uh, Travis King in some kind of quarantine before they uh, properly interrogate him. All right. So even if, if North Korea does intend to release him, it, it might be uh, it, it might be a while to come. Right, uh, James Fretwell, thank you very much uh, for joining us from Seoul, explaining us the situation on the ground and what this could mean for the United States as well. Thanks once again for being with us. Let's uh, now shift focus to the other.